Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Everyday Caddy for the Everyday Guys. So the worst thing in humankind just happened. I recorded a full review video and I forgot to put my mic on. So this is take two of the Southwest Holsters Rattler and Viper Holster Review. Fortunately, I'm reviewing something really cool. So I guess it's okay that I'm doing it for the second time. Now before we go further, I do want to let you know that my review methodology has changed and my review methodologies for most things are going to change over the coming months. Previously, my holster reviews, as you remember, were done um, where I focused on concealment, comfortability or comfort and retention. And I wore this white t-shirt and I showed out how it concealed and retention, etc, etc. I found that that was a very subjective way of doing the review. What is concealable and comfortable to me might not be concealable and comfortable to someone else. And let me expand on that. I have a very athletic body type. Okay, I spent um, a large portion of my life doing Muay Thai and then I spent another large portion doing crazy Jiu Jitsu. So, and I've also been in the gym for the better part of my adult life. So my body is shaped more athletically and what i mean by that is my chest is built in such a way that it protrudes past the front side of my stomach my stomach is fairly flat so when i wear a t-shirt it hangs down from my chest and i've got more t-shirt room between the inside of my t-shirt and the sort of my my tummy to conceal a firearm now if you're built in the opposite direction where your chest is small and your tummy is larger you're going to have the opposite effect. So how can I genuinely say what something is going to be like for concealment for every single person when body type does play a role in concealment? Now, there are certain things a holster can do to improve concealment, and I'm going to talk about that in this video. But I am going to adjust my review methods so that they are more objective, so that they appeal and apply to more people. And hopefully it improves the quality and the information that I'm putting out. Now we've got two holsters to review today. One is the Southwest Holsters Viper. So this is their production holster. It's, it's the holster that's like their go-to holster. And it caters for just your base Glock 19. Now I do want to let you know straight off the bat, the firearm is empty and safe. And any holsters used in this video are also empty. So... Throughout the video, we will be good to go. There are no live rounds in the vicinity. Now, straight off the bat, one of the things I like about this holster is the minimalistic amount of materials used. It's a folded piece of Kydex. And as you can see, this thing is like folded to just about cover your Glock. Obviously, your trigger guard area is covered and safe. And it doesn't affect the mag release, which is a good deal. What this transfers to is a really good comfort. The less gear you stick inside your pants, the more comfortable it's going to be. Now, I also want to expand on comfort. I review everything from an everyday guy's perspective. What that means is the following. No firearm you can carry is more comfortable than not carrying a firearm. Let's just get that out of the way. We've all heard the old adage, carrying a firearm is supposed to be comforting, not comfortable. It really is comforting and not comfortable. However, it should not be so uncomfortable that you can't deal with it. Modern holsters, modern designs dictate that these things are comfortable enough that you can carry it 15 hours a day and you shouldn't be cringing by the time you get home with um, broken skin or a rash or that sort of thing. And a holster that's designed like this with this minimalistic look and feel definitely is comfortable. The Kydex is really smooth. You know what this Kydex reminds me of? My last line of defense holster. That smoothness. It's a very nicely, smoothly polished version of Kydex, especially the inside. The inside is even more smooth than the outside. And that positive retention click on this is really positive. And it's kind of what you'd expect with a holster that just caters for for um, the base firearm because I get the detention click off the trigger guard and it's not really a new technology. But the smoothness is very nice. Now when I talk about the smoothness of this over the smoothness of other holsters, guys, believe it or not, I don't review every holster I own. I have 58 holsters. I've done about 20 holster reviews for two main reasons. One, there are holsters that have been sent to me that are simply not up to the standard. And when I tell it to the, the supplier, they say, please don't review it also because you'd affect our business. Now, I'm okay with that. I'm not out here to affect people's livelihoods. And also, remember the subjectivity of it. 
Something that I'm not happy with might not be something that you're not happy with. You might be perfectly happy with the also that I can't stand. So I always give the supplier the option of saying, do you want me to review this? Yes or no, however I have found fault. And more often than not, when it's negative, they say, please don't review it. In fact, I know I'm digressing a bit, but the only company that said to me, you can review our gear regardless of how you find it, is Sitemark, the guys who do my red dot site. Um, they are very confident in their gear and they were like, you know, just do what you want. You can review it. We don't care. Back to the holster. So as you can see, I'm running a quick clip on this holster and I'm going to digress again. This holster comes with either a quick clip mounting or this cantable, canted version of the quick clip. It's nice and thick, which is a good thing. And I'll talk about that a bit later. And then you also have a J clip, which can be mounted over there or over there. If you want to, you could mount soft loops on here as well. So on the clip side of things, now there are a lot of people who mail me daily, who follow my Instagram feed and say, you should not use this clip or this clip or this clip because they fail. And what I would then ask them is, could you please send me a picture of your failed J clip or quick clip or whatever the case may be and they send me a picture of a clip that is in perfect working condition and I asked what are you talking about when you say failure and what they say is they went to draw the firearm and the firearm came out with a holster attached now guys I want to say this that is not a failure of the clip that is a failure of you to properly mount the clip to what however you are carrying it be it bulk pants whatever the case may be a clip failure if your clip failed it should be broken if it is not broken, it did not fail. You simply didn't mount it correctly. Now, I want to be honest though, the two times I actually received a picture of a failed clip was on these. Basically, one user had opened it to put the holster on and they overstressed this and it cracked at this fulcrum point over here and vice versa. Someone pulled it, take the holster off and it cracked in the same place. So be cognizant, be aware that these things are subject to fail at this point of view. So when you bend, bend them from, how do I show this? Bend them like that. So you protect this area over here. Better still guys, if you are going to put on your holster every single morning, which you should, check it. Check to make sure your clips are seated correctly and you probably are not going to have a problem. And if you think it's, it's out of your way to check it, consider this. Every morning you rack your slide. Okay, and then you probably press check. Now, 100 times out of 100, or well, 99.9 .9 times out of 100, when you rack that slide, a round is going to be chambered. But you want to be certain, so you press check it. Same thing with your holster. Every morning when you put it on, you probably are putting it on correctly. But take an extra 5 seconds to check and make sure your clips are mounted correctly. And you probably are going to be good to go. Um, guys like T-Rex Arms, Tier 1 Conceal, G-Code, who are running quick clips on their holsters, although it's their design, which I think is really cool. Um, I've seen instructors locally and internationally who are highly respected running J-Clips. These guys would not run it if it was subject to fail. They are the most popular types of clips worldwide. I will, however, say if you want a clip that is mistake-proof, go for a soft loop, because a soft loop once on is on and once off is off. You can't you can't put it on slightly incorrectly. It's either going to be perfectly on or not on at all. So if you want to protect yourself from yourself, because there is a wrong way you can put these things on, then definitely go for the soft loop and you'll more than likely be good to go. However, guys, these clips, most clips today very rarely fail. It's how you put them on that causes the problem. So I've been running this for about a month with absolutely no issues. The comfort here is really good. The concealment's good as well. So the way I'm going to do concealment going forward, I just want to load a mag. The mag is empty. The way I'm going to do concealment going forward is I've got this little tool, okay? And what it does is, if I can just properly seat it. So when I put the holster on, I take it and I put it against the base of the mag and I slide this down until it touches my tummy effectively and I check the number and that is basically how far the outside edge of the mag sits from my tummy. Now that is the most scientific way I can do this, the most objective way. On the Viper holster it's four centimeters. So what I'm trying to say there is if your t-shirt does not expand four centimeters from your waistline, 
then you are going to have a concealment problem with this holster. And probably later down the line, as I do more reviews, I'll develop like a, a repository of information where you could go and look at different holsters and this measurement will be there and you'll be able to see which holster to buy if you want maximum concealment. Now, another thing I want to talk about when it comes to all my holsters is does the holster offer you the opportunity to get a good, firm, robust firing grip on the firearm when you draw it straight from the holster? Do you have to draw and then readjust to get that good firing grip? And fortunately, I'm pleased to say this offers a great firing grip. Basically, what that means is the grip of the firearm sits high enough above your waistband so that you can get your three fingers wrapped around it tightly, draw and not have to make an adjustment. So that is very important and something I'm going to be adding to all my holster reviews from now onwards. I see a lot of holsters where guys conceal great, but the grip of the firearm sort of sits like there. And so what they have to do is get the thumb in, pull it up and then get a, a grip, a, a, a robust firing grip. That's not, for, in my opinion, that's not ideal. Remember guys, everything on the channel is opinion, nothing is a recommendation. So just to go back to concealment, I do want to add, I was able to carry this holster with a plus two base plate and concealment was great. So four centimeters sounds like a lot, but it's actually really fine when it comes to concealment for me personally. Check your measurements if you want to know what it does for you, but the tuck is really good. It's not so aggressive that it's uncomfortable and that's because this bar sits fairly close to the trigger guard area. Now, I will add that affects concealment on holsters. The closer the bar is to the trigger guard, the less effect the bar is going to have. Fortunately, this bar is situated far from the clip. When a belt goes through a clip for about two centimeters after the outside of the clip, there's no tension on that belt because it's straightened and, and it needs space to curve again. You don't want your clip too close to your claw. You want it at least like three centimeters away. And I, I don't know if I measurement so correct, I'll probably measure that after this video. But you do want a nice distance between your clip and your claw. And then on retention, retention is adjustable. It's got, as you can see, these two little spaces over here, you tighten those down and you can adjust the tension, but straight out of the bat, the retention is really nice. It's got such a nice solid retentive or retention click. Is retentive a word? I'm not sure. It's got a really nice solid retention click. So you are very much good to go with this guy straight out of the box. Talking about the box, it does come in a really cool Southwest Holsters box, lifetime guarantee on this guy with a bit of their backstory at the back here. You might want to read that. It's really cool. Um, and I'm very impressed with their packaging and just the overall the overall look and feel of the holster. I mean, multicam, you know what I mean? Multicam is sexy as Hell, I wish everything was multicam. And then also guys, a very important thing is your holster to stay in position. What I mean by that is if you're jumping, if you're rotating your body, if you're leaning forwards or backwards, your holster has to remain where you thought you left it. So that if you have to quickly go for the draw, you can do so. And it's not going to have moved, you know, three or four centimeters on your waistline. This holster, the clip is tight enough and there's enough. Um, friction resistance from your belt and pants on the claw and the clip that it does stay exactly where, exactly where you left it. So we are good to go there. So on the conclusion side of the Southwest Holsters Viper, really a absolutely functional holster. I have no problem wearing this guy. Concealment for me is good. You have the numbers. Another thing I do like about it is straight out of the bat, it comes ready to cater for suppressor height sights and a red dot. That's really cool because if you do have a firearm that has, you know, regular sights and you want to switch to a red dot, you don't have to go out and buy an exact copy of the current holster you have just because it doesn't cater for that. I can tell you going forward, way more people are switching to this. I'm in the know, I know, I know some of the numbers. And there are a lot of people switching to red dots from irons and I'm a particular fan of red dots and I'll talk about that again in a future video. So the Southwest Holsters Viper, their production model holster, really well thought out, really sexy looking guy. Just an all around excellent package if you are looking for a holster that caters for just your base firearm. Very well done to the guys at Southwest Holsters. But now onto the topic everybody wants to talk about, this guy. This is called the Rattler. I don't know if it's because of this. Okay, that's not a fault and also don't stress about that. So the monkey in the room here is this paracord. Is that a potential weak spot or failure point? Well, technically, yes, it is. So in testing this holster, and I have to just uh, let you know my girlfriend hates this holster because for the past month, every night she's heard this. I've done that every single night without fail for the past month, trying to get this holster 
or the paracord to fray. Sometimes I did it with the mag, sometimes I did it without the mag. I have also left this holster in this position overnight and the very next day left it in that position over the night. And I can tell you that at no point in any way, shape or form has the paracord frayed or lost tension or anything. I've tried to sort of expedite the testing to a point where um, it would basically get to a point where someone would basically have this same amount of wear on this in like a year or two. But I can tell you the paracord on this is still 100% good to go. The only thing that has happened is the Kydex has sort of scratched up a bit, but I don't really care about that. So at this point, I am comfortable to wear and carry this also. And I think a very, very similar design um, is currently being made by the guys at Tier 1 Concealed. And um, they are the kind, they are kind of giant size. I would imagine they know what they're doing. However, their holster has a different claw um, construction and we're going to talk about this claw. Okay, so let's get into it. Why would we want this sort of paracord situation? Basically, this allows the holster to conform to any body type. Now, there are sweet spot for holsters. For instance, for me, it is this curve on the Last Line Defense Associate V2. That curve for me, is perfect to where it's comfortable and great. However, someone else might not have the same body type, and a problem, someone else probably is not going to have the same body type as me. So that curve doesn't suit them. What this allows for is the holster to curve to pretty much any body type. I mean, if you have some really weird body type, it could even do that, but that's not going to really work. You have an infinite amount of body types this holster can curve to, and I do like holsters with built-in spare mag carriers. Why is it such a rare thing? I really like a holster with a built-in spare mag carrier. That is definitely something that I, I, I want, I like, and enjoy having. So on the comfort aspect, this is probably going to be one of your most comfortable holsters with spare mag carriers that you buy and it is really comfortable. You have an excellent range of motion. There's no scratching chafing and as you can even see like there's like not a lot of spare material here. It's again minimal amount of materials used which is sort of like the golden ticket for holsters. Use less material and it will be more comfortable. This holster does not conceal as well as the Viper and the reason for that is that the clip and the claw are very close to each other. As I said, as a belt comes out of a clip, it needs some space in order for the claw to be effective. And that's because the clip is flat and it takes away the curved area of the belt, especially if you have a really rigid belt. Now, my measurements on this is 4.7 millimeters away from my stomach. So the outside edge of the mag is 4.7 millimeters away. So it's 0.7, sorry, not millimeters, centimeters. So it's 0.7 of a centimeter less concealment than this guy over here. Me personally, I can wear that comfortably because of my body shape, but you have the information so you can make an informed decision. On the comfort side though, it is extremely comfortable. This is probably one of the most comfortable ways to carry a firearm with a built-in mag carrier there is. It's as little material as I've said, it allows, this area over here allows you to lift your legs, it's not a flat surface. It's sort of ergonomically designed to fit in the crevices that God put in your body for you to carry a holster with a spare mag carrier. The retention on this guy is also adjustable. You've got two little spaces over here that you can tighten and loosen. Obviously you can't loosen it too much because eventually you'll loosen this to a point where this whole situation here is loose, but you can adjust the retention. The inside is also that really smooth Kydex. Southwest Holsters Kydex is so smooth. It's, it's, it's just better. It's just nicer. You know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know much about Kydex. I don't know how a holster is made at all. Maybe I should educate myself on that. But the Kydex is really smooth. Uh, I don't know if it's just mine, but it just feels really nice. And then obviously you do get multiple patterns and you get the school scales and things. I like things where styling is added to it because that's just nice. At the end of the day, if you're going to spend your hard-earned cash, you want to spend your hard-earned cash on something you enjoy, something you enjoy seeing, something you enjoy looking at. And at the, we know no one sees your holster, but you see your holster and you work for your money. So you want something that looks cool. And this absolutely does. So big ups to the guys at Southwest Holsters for that. Now guys, also something very important. This holster also allows you to get a very good three finger grip. One of the things I do want to add is I noticed after like my, I don't know, 300th uh, unholster and reholster that this area over here began to sort of 
chafe against my fingertip. And I thought that was a holster problem until I sort of realized and remembered that I have an undercut trigger guard. So if you have an undercut trigger guard, you might want to take like a Dremel to this so that it doesn't sort of catch on your, your uh, middle finger on the inside. There's not a fault in the holster. They obviously can't know that I've got an undercut trigger guard. They have, they have the designs and obviously it is cut and smoothed out like it should be. It's just my trigger guard is, shall I say, off the market. So I've got to cater for that. Sadly, guys, there aren't many of these types of holsters. For some other reason, locally, um, guys aren't making holsters with built on spare mag carriers. And I think there's so much validity to having this. The, you are able to get a good robust firing grip, you are able to draw the mag from the mag carrier quite easily and reseat it quite easily, it doesn't go anywhere, even though this padded guard is flappy like that, it's not really flappy in a downward direction. Definitely a viable option if you are looking for a holster with a spare mag carrier. I want to say a massive thanks to the guy at Southwest Holsters, particularly James, he's probably one of the coolest guys I've ever met, like just even in life, he's such a chilled, I'd almost want to say dude, he's just so relaxed and he's like, contact me if you have any questions. And he's so open to, to, to different options, different things. Very, very cool guy. He's also a tattoo artist, which makes him even more cool. Definitely contact them if you want to get hold of them. So the way to get hold of them is through the Instagram page or, page or WhatsApp. I'm going to leave the link to the Instagram page down below as well as the images. I'm not going to leave the WhatsApp number on YouTube because of privacy issues. So the Instagram number, sorry, their WhatsApp number is on the Instagram feed, so go and check it out. Guys, remember, we still have the Blazing Triggers competition running. Don't forget to enter. That closes this coming Wednesday, I think, um, if you are watching this on date of review or release. So don't forget to check that out. And then immediately after that, we've got the OLED competition, which is going to be really awesome. Um, I think that's like my fifth competition in five months. I'm not sure. We've got so much reviews coming of different sites, red dots. We've got more Sightmark gear coming. We've got more holsters. Things are looking really exciting on the channel. Guys, that is it. Thank you so much again to James at Southwest Holsters for hooking me up with this awesome piece of gear. My personal opinion, if you are looking for this sort of thing, you are not going to be disappointed. And that is it, guys. Have a good week. I will see you soon for another review. Cheers. God bless.